We are at the top of Paris Mountain near Greenville, South Carolina in a garden that appropriately is called Stony Borders. And this is the garden of Dee and Bill Bradshaw. Bill, this is a wonderful garden and y'all knew a little bit about gardening in this kind of zone or environment because of being from Arkansas, but you didn't know what was gonna happen when you try to put a shovel in the ground here. Right, the soil is very much like crush and run except it's red. So what we did was uh, build terrace walls and then dig out the more native soil and sift it to get the gravel, the larger pieces of gravel, and then we brought in about 120 cubic yards of good soil to mix in with the native soil. But you had a beautiful bedroom. You have a post and beam house and you wanted a view from your bedroom. And well, I think that started it. We actually decided to build the house so that every room has a window that looks out on what would eventually become a garden. And so over the seven years that we built the gardens around the house, we would add to a garden for each of the windows. And the first one was the triangle garden? The first one was the triangle garden, which is what we could see from the master bedroom. And let's talk a little bit about that one. Well, the most prominent feature that it has is a, um, a hibiscus that is uh, red and about the size of my hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have some images with about 40 flowers on uh -huh. that hardy hibiscus. But you also, everywhere we look, have lots of hydrangeas, the white woody hydrangeas, some yes. of them being the native oak leaves and some of them being the paniculatas. Yes. And, and they are a feature that we see repeated throughout the garden. And we see a lot of them there too. And everywhere we look, we see plants with pollinators. The um, echinacea and rudbeckia is just evident when they talk about repetition. How wonderful that you're using something uh, that we, is so valuable to the, to the native we insects. We have a lot of native pollinators. And there's so many different kinds too. And then we go from the triangle, you finally decided that you would, would since we were on the top of the mountain, maybe you should use some curves to what I think is a crescent garden. Yeah, virtually all the rest of the garden are uh, curved. Uh, we tend to like curves uh, more than straight lines. When you sent me the original pictures of the garden, I thought it was acres and acres, and actually it's- It's, it's about an acre, mm -hmm. yeah. But, but you feel like you've gone around the world. And so I go to the Crescent Garden, and that's kind of out there, um, more open and a, and a very sunny spot with a good bit, just a nice variety of things. And you said that that's kind of typical of y'all. There's not a master plan behind it. Yes. No, we just did each section. We'd finish a section like in the fall, and then we'd do another one in the spring. And then during the summer, we'd just coast through and try and keep everything alive. And water, because you don't have irrigation. No, we do not. We water everything by hand or with over sprinklers. But as we move on around, we get to a little Charleston garden, which is very sweet and has a little fountain. And then we come to what I think is, it's not as showy, but I think very beautiful. And that's that um, hillside shade garden. Right, and that, that's the termination point of one of our streams. And it's uh, a, a shade garden that's built into uh, a, a rocky hillside. Um, everywhere I look, rocky, and I, don't, I know you brought a lot of amendments up here, but the one amendment you did not have to bring was rocks. Most of the rocks, in fact all of the rocks that are in the upper garden, uh, what we call the mountain garden where we're sitting now, have come out of these beds. They've been dug to about 18 inches in depth and you find a tremendous number of red native rocks when you start digging in these uh, hills. Um, and then as we move on around, um, I don't know why Dee thought that she was going to sit and enjoy breakfast and a second cup of coffee at all, but she did, and so she planned, I think that was the first water feature perhaps. Yes. Um, and so tell us about that water feature. Well, in, in Little Rock, when we lived there for seven years, we did have a small, very small pond right outside of our breakfast area. And when we decided to move here, she said she wanted to duplicate that. So we did it on a grander scale, but it is one that you can look down from the breakfast area into the pond and then we have two waterfalls that go into the pond. And moving uphill from that, we have kind of a grand pool. That's the 3,000 gallon pond, and it is primarily useful to us in terms of water lilies. And we have pictures with 18, 20 water lilies blooming at one time in that pond. So you really haven't limited yourself to one particular type of plant material. You have um, a lot of 
flowering perennials that come back. You have a lot of shade loving perennials. You have woody plant material. And then one of the things that I think is a cohesive force and really makes it all fit together on this mountainside is your use of conifers. We enjoy the full year uh, view that they provide us, yes. They also make a nice transition because your property, very fortunately, abuts a park of some right. type. Right, Paris Mountain State mm -hmm. Park is one of our neighbors, mm -hmm. the neighbor to the east. So the sun rises over Paris Mountain State Park into our bedroom. Then, um, when you thought you could rest on your laurels, a piece of property up mountainside came available. Right, and where we're sitting right now is a piece of property that we bought the lower half of. It's roughly 200 feet by 70 feet from our driveway. And uh, we've spent the last six years uh, developing gardens in this space. And I think one of the most beautiful aspects of this garden is the sunset garden, which is right behind yes, us. Yes, and this is the time to see it with the daylilies blooming. Although we do try and have it uh, also continue through the summer with coleus, but the daylilies are the, the showiest part of the sunset garden. And we got that idea out of a book, uh, read that Monet had uh, both a sunrise and a sunset garden where the plant material gave the colors of the two uh, times of day. So we decided to focus on the sunset. Bill, there are very few times when you were sitting and getting to enjoy the fruits of these labors. I think you told me that y'all spent a thousand hours. Um, well, between the two of us, we're spending about 700 hours each uh, in gardening activities. Now that includes going to buy plants as well as planting and watering and going to the dump with the plant material that's being trimmed and thrown away. But this is a garden that looks like it would be a garden at an estate where there were full-time gardeners. And yet, I think it's remarkable that you and your wife have sent your, put your passion for nature and your love for the outdoors. And in creating this and in sharing it with people, I know that you have fundraisers here to help support um, a, a garden in downtown Greenville. And, um, and we want to appreciate your opening the garden to making it grow today. Well, we're happy to have you visit. Thank you.